Hi everybody, uh, my name is uh, Hakan Fors. I'm an Agile coach uh, here in Sweden doing mainly coaching uh, with Kanban teams. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, queuing theory in software development. And I hope everybody hears me. So I will just get started. So, queuing theory in uh, software development, uh, or as the title for this talk was uh, when I did this on Agile Sweden a couple of uh, days ago, uh, what can traffic in Stockholm teach you about your development process? So I'm going to talk about keeping working progress low. Uh, how you can use theory of constraints to improve your process and the importance of balancing uh, the demand against uh, your throughput in your system. So let's start with keeping work in progress low in your process. This is a picture I took uh, a few weeks ago on one of uh, the highways in Stockholm. Uh, so my question for you is, do you think uh, this uh, slide or this slide, which one goes, the f where goes the cars the fastest? And probably most of you would guess that uh, in this case, uh, the car were able to go a little bit faster than and in this one. And if you take this into your uh, development process, so this is a, a Kanban board. Uh, the amount of time it will take to get tickets from the to-do lane to the done lane, in this case, in general, takes shorter than in this case. And all this boils down to, uh, for simple cues, it boils down to this uh, theory that's called the, the Little's Law. Uh, where you have work in progress uh, through the throughput of the system actually gives the cycle time. So if we put, uh, if we have 12 items in our queue or in, in the process and we have an average uh, throughput in that system of 12 items per minute, uh, the items uh, going into the system would stay in the system for one minute. So if we keep the same throughput, we haven't done any modifications to this uh, to the process at all, and we just lower the amount of uh, things that we have in the process, the average time for something to go through the system would actually also go down to half. So Using this formula, we can very easily see that uh, when we uh, change the amount of work that we have in the process, it will ge get faster to get things through the system. And also the opposite, if we add more things to the system, it will take longer. So why is this important? Well, with less work in progress in our system, we get shorter cycle times. Uh, and shorter cycle times means if you have a flow-based system that you get things from the input queue to the, the output faster. Uh, and this also gives you faster feedback. So if you discover a defect and you discover the defect uh, in the end of the process, it actually takes a much shorter time to get to, to find these defects. And you have the opportunity to fix them faster. And in a process sense, this also makes problems with the, the actual process visible much faster. So if you have lots of things in your process uh, and you have problems, it's going to take longer for you to actually discover them if you want to collect uh, enough data to be sure on a statistical level. So it's not just good to keep things flowing through your system, but also to discover the problems that you have in your system. And one of the things that you can use to 
improve the process and also as a very effective tool to uh, to focus your efforts is to use something called the theory of constraints uh, and the theory of constraints is uh, a theory where you uh, or a method where you identify uh, the weakest uh, the weakest link in uh, your process uh, or you can also call it how to find the bottlenecks of your system and the theory of constraints contain a, f a five step uh, five focusing steps how you should improve uh, your process and it contains of the first step where you try to identify the constraint uh, or the bottleneck of your system and the next step is to try to exploit your constraints so this is kind of uh, not straightforward but the the thinking is that if you have uh, a constraint in your system you need to try to use that constraint uh, to its fullest capacity because uh, without doing any other changes to your to your process uh, uh, you could actually get your process to be more efficient just by using your constraints uh, to the maximum and this means that you take the third step and, uh, step, and that means that you will change the things uh, so you would you will exploit this constraint uh, so for instance if you have uh, one step of the process is your constraint uh, you will try to get that step or the ones working in that step in your process to be utilized 100% of the time uh, instead of trying to make that part of the process uh, wider by for instance hiring some someone new uh, that is often much much more, more uh, expensive you will try to do things like uh, will the person working in the process that is the bottleneck uh, you will try to offload work from them that are not part of the actual uh, bottlenecks activities so maybe you help them out uh, going to meetings they don't have to go to you try to uh, help them with uh, writing uh, reports uh, and you offload that work to uh, someone else in the process where you have excess capacity but if this doesn't work you might need to actually expand uh, expand the, uh, the constraint that you have in the system and this is as we said before often quite expensive uh, if this uh, is the development or maybe the testing part of your process uh, it, it's quite expensive to learn someone new to uh, be the tester or the developer of your system and therefore if you could focus to exploit your constraint is actually often much cheaper but sometimes you have to evaluate uh, evaluate the, the constraint so you maybe hire some new uh, teach someone else to do the stuff uh, and by this usually you will uh, for after a while move the constraint uh, to somewhere else in the process and then you basically just step back to step one and you start over and it's very important that you keep doing this uh, and don't uh, allow inertia to uh, just you keep going and you will not really improve your process so how would we if we go back to the traffic situation again and we have in this case a constraint we have uh, a capacity of six uh, cars passing here every minute when we had three lanes but here in the middle we only have two lanes and the capacity here is actually just four cars per minute and after here we have uh, again three lanes so we have a capacity of six cars per minute but if you look for all over this process the the capacity will be um, constrained by this capacity here in the middle so the actual throughput or capacity of the whole process would just be uh, four 
cars per minute. So it's very, very important that you utilize your bottleneck uh, to full capacity. So you should try your hardest to avoid problems in your bottleneck. And that means that, uh, uh, as I said before, maybe you help uh, the people doing the bottleneck work to do things that don't really have to do. Uh, it's very important to uh, keep them busy all the time. So most of the time you will try to create some kind of uh, buffer in front of uh, the bottleneck uh, so you will never go down uh, below 100% uh, utilization. And this is very important because uh, if you lose capacity at, at your bottleneck it's more or less impossible to get that back uh, for the time period. Uh, then you need to uh, grow the capacity of that bottleneck uh, quite a bit more because every minute that you lose at the bottleneck will be lost forever for this process. And as long as you have more capacity in front of the bottleneck, uh, you don't really have to uh, have more capacity uh, than the bottleneck, but it is important that you don't have less because then, of course, that part of the process will become the new uh, bottleneck. And sometimes you need to have a little bit more uh, capacity in front of the bottleneck uh, so the bottleneck will never get starved of work uh, and therefore not be utilized 100%. Uh, and another point is that if you let, uh, if you have higher capacity in front of the bottleneck and you keep adding things into the process, uh, we get back to the limit, uh, the amount of work in process when you actually uh, fill the process with work, uh, the cycle time will go up. Uh, we also, if we have uh, uh, capacity after bottleneck, uh, it doesn't really matter if the capacity is uh, much greater than uh, at the bottleneck because you can't really get any faster than uh, the bottleneck. How about queues? This is probably indication of queues. You will see the red lights of the cars uh, and they are quite close together. Uh, it's not sure 